guys. I'm going to kind of follow up on uh, his question, and I did not anticipate it, but uh, we were talking about energy and the, the dire need for it and the cost associated with it. And I know that it has been a mantra of uh, certain sectors of our society that drill, baby, drill. And as I listen to that, and as we drill each barrel and remove it from the soil, how is this today? How is this going to help our great grandchildren a few generations away? Um, and that's why, sir, I think we need an all of the above approach. We have to continue to develop wind energy, alternate source of energy, but we also have to continue to uh, utilize the domestic source of energy we have today. It's almost like a balance of all these things. You've got to do what we do. Uh, have some focus on how we create jobs and how we build the country and build families today. But you are right, we have to keep an idea of where is this country going to be 100 years, not only from the debt, which I've talked extensively about, but from energy, where are we going to be, uh, what's the environment going to be like, and I think those are all factors that we have to take in. I think it's a very real concern uh, that many of us share. We might not all agree on what the best way is to get there, but I think that if we don't keep that in perspective and just think about today, uh, that we're making a huge mistake for our kids and grandkids. So thank you for your question, sir. Thank you. Okay, yes, sir. Bye. Yes, sir. Congressman, I have a question here. On the website on the issues last November on your campaign website, you stated, quote, I can't support legislation rammed through Congress that will raise our taxes, increase insurance premiums, and promise to make drastic cuts in Medicare. Yet within three, four months, we voted for Paul Ryan bill. Now, let me ask you, why do you expect why do you expect us to believe anything that you're saying here and today? Right. Let me tell you, first of all, sir, the proposal that deals with Medicare, that there is a healthy debate, and every, both parties admit that we need to make modifications to try to preserve Medicare. Both parties want to do that. The, the question is, is how we go forward and do that in a way which actually can work, that makes financial sense. The proposal that's before you doesn't cut expenditures of Medicare. In fact, Medicare goes up every year under the Paul Ryan proposal. It just doesn't go up as fast. It, it doesn't go up as much. And so, you know, only in Washington is a cut of an increase uh, it, it considered a cut. And so what we're trying to do is figure out a way to preserve uh, this proposal and try to work together with the president, both parties, to try to find a way to preserve Medicare. And this is a is a is one opening salvo in that debate. The president's put up sort of his proposal to save Medicare, and we're going to go down that road together and try to figure out a way to solve this for the future of the country. Because the goals of both parties, they may have different ways to get there, and both parties can spend an entire room telling the other party where they're wrong. But the goal of both parties is to figure out a way to pr preserve Medicare and try to balance the budget. Which is you're saying no, we're preserving. We're preserving this thing. Yeah, we're playing those bank We're playing those bank We're playing those bank
because I do think we need to be serious about this, and even though Kansas is a corn producing state, we've got to be honest about that, about that debate. Yeah. That's right. That, that's right. But I will say that the prescription drug benefit, Medicare Part D, uh, is the only part of Medicare that's actually coming under the estimates. Whether you like that or not, that's just the reality. It's actually coming 41% under what it was estimated to cost. And that's because it uses a model similar to what the Path to Prosperity uses. And that is a, a way in which the consumers, the patients, can choose as opposed to the government choosing. And that's the debate we have to have is which we think is the proper way. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Is there any current legislation in D.C. to curb repeal the stringent uh, EPA regulations described in Chris Horner's book, Power Grab, and his former book, Red Hot Lies, that tells of Al Gore's fraudulent um, global <laughs> Well, there are there is a very healthy debate about that right now. We've had uh, those votes on the floor. And the question is, last year, the president had a proposal, cap and trade, uh, many people are familiar with it, uh, and after Congress switched uh, parties, the President made very clear, well, I can't get cap and trade through Congress, so we're going to do it another way, and that was through defining carbon uh, as a global pollutant under the Clean Air Act, and so that's what the EPA is doing. Uh, I fundamentally believe that's a debate we should have on the floor of Congress. Uh, many businesses and many folks in this country are very challenged by the idea that unelected, unaccountable folks in the bureaucracy can make decisions inconsistent with what Congress's original intent was. We can have votes on these issues on the floor, we can have up or down debates, and the American people can decide through the traditional democratic system, not through bureaucrats making decisions in Washington outside of the congressional process that creates a whole new set of instability for small business owners and drives up the cost of doing business. So I think what EPA does, we've got to have a healthy debate about it, but those decisions ought to be made by the American people, uh, not by expanding other regulations that already exist. So we've got time for, we've got time for one more question. Well, I think you hit on a very important point. We've got to have new jobs in this country. We've got to have the economy going because that's what's, that's the unifying principle that, that, that is going to resolve these problems. And that you have about nine percent unemployment rate. Nobody wants that. Nobody, neither party thinks that's acceptable. Uh, both parties have plans that, that they think can try to create those jobs. And you have a situation where uh, you have the lack of jobs creating further pressure on debt, further pressure on the deficit, further pressure on Social Security, further pressure on Medicare. And so the unifying threat amongst both parties, amongst what we're doing in Washington, is we've got to get America back to work again. It's a very healthy and important debate. And I would say I will continue to do everything I can to do what I believe is, is the best source of policies to get the country growing again. This time, we're at 6 o'clock. The evening is uh, our session concluded. I will stay around. Folks would like to visit a little bit after the meeting. But thank you all so very much. You're for many of you. You're for many of you. Thank you very much.